There's a lot of videos on YouTube talking about the top 10 movies, or listing what all the top TV shows are, but there aren't that many that talk about what the greatest YouTube videos are. Being a website, we spend so much time browsing. We've all accumulated a few favorite videos, be they the underground legends with only a handful of views, or heavily produced three-hour documentaries with millions. This list is my own self-indulgent ranking, going off of my experiences browsing the platform, and my own opinions. I'm going to be listing my belief to be the very best this place has to offer, building up to what I believe is the single greatest YouTube video of all time. Turtle Song Persian Language is a video that, a few years back, I was really obsessed with. Everything about it, the way there's a slight delay in the animation before the song starts playing, the fact that there's no explanation for why this edit exists, or why the source material was chosen, it's simply an excellent shitpost. Honestly, making any effort at analyzing this video goes against the charm of its simplicity. Turtle Song Persian Language doesn't overstay its welcome, so instead of doing a Lessons in Meme Culture style vivisection of this video, it's really best for you to just go watch it, all other contexts aside. There's something special about old YouTube videos. When you click on one and you get that imposing 18 years ago message. Family Guy Slideshow was only uploaded 14 years ago, but it carries all the weight and power of the oldest YouTube relics. It's also kind of creepy. There's something about the distorted sound of children screaming, paired with random Family Guy stills, that brings about a certain sense of unease. <laughs> They're reciting a bit from the Spongebob episode, The Idiot Box, and the video does lose some of its mystique once you know this. But still, it speaks to a carefree time in one's life, predating the conventions of modern shitposting. Jacob's Ladder Head Shake Effect Test is a truly blessed video. It needs no introduction. I admire his audacity in making this video. There's something about it that I just can't put my finger on that's simply awe-inspiring. Sometimes, someone will come along who doesn't see the internet the same way we do. Someone with real agency who uploads whatever they want, regardless of what other people may say and think. Outsider art. XX Random Weirdos XX was one such man, and his 2012 masterpiece, Funny Dance Scene, is one of the ballsiest videos I've ever seen. The self-satisfied laugh at the start, <laughs> the shaky camera, and of course, the proud conclusion at the end. That's funny. You have to think, who did he upload this for? XX Random Weirdos XX uploaded this video for nobody but himself, and I respect him for it. If you'll recall, in the summer of 2020, the internet was wrapped up in the mystery surrounding the Super Mario N64 iceberg, building the kind of atmosphere for horror-themed ROM hacks to start circulating, like the creepypastas of yore. It's hard to believe that three years have already passed since all this went down, but my favorite thing to come out of the whole spiel was a fictional OST called 1995-0729 build, Incomplete Soundtrack. It's referencing the supposed 1995-0729 build of Mario N64, which has an ominous do not research message accompanying its iceberg entry. <laughs> the soundtrack has all kinds of strange samples that fit perfectly with the aesthetic of the original iceberg, and I haven't been able to find the sources for most of them. The Mario N64 stuff from that summer was really the recent peak of creepypastas, ARGs, and whatnot. At parts it did feel genuinely creepy, but not in a forced kind of way. And importantly, it didn't devolve too far into the fanfiction side of things, i.e. the backrooms. Incomplete soundtrack encapsulates this, it's a great video, and that distorted rendition of Inside the Castle Walls sounds amazing on its own. Being an American, I was never extremely familiar with the bizarre pink creature that is Mr. Blobby. There's something about this guy that just makes you think, what were they thinking? I can't understand the appeal at all. And the Mr. Blobby music video, 1993 Christmas number one, exemplifies everything uncanny about this thing. And yes, Mr. Blobby really did peak at number one on the UK singles chart. You know all those memes about retail workers being forced to listen to All I Want For Christmas Is You throughout November and December? Try putting up with this song. And as for the lyrics themselves, they do not disappoint. Blobby, our Mr. Blobby, your influence will spread throughout the land. No end to his talents. There's nothing in the world he cannot do. And of course, there's all of the children walking down this sort of spiral staircase bereft of any enthusiasm. At least, with Grimace, he almost never talks, but Blobby is always uttering these guttural, upbeat, gurgling sounds. He's also got a son. Some say that loud equals funny. However, many people disagree with this sentiment and argue that ear rape jokes are unfunny and unoriginal. They may be right, but Hogasm caught on tape, re-uploaded, has a special place in my heart. It's true that the only real gag in this video is the ear rape, but this is one of the good ones. 
It's like one of those Family Guy gags that keeps going on forever. So if you don't like the joke, it's terrible. But if you do like it, then it's comedy gold. Hogasm earns its place at 44, and then some. But not enough to earn its place in 43. That honor goes to Mega Ice TV. Mega Ice TV is a channel that first came onto my radar after they made a live-action adaptation of the SpongeBob episode, Pizza Delivery. And evidently, this has become something of a trend, which they presumably started. But their greatest work actually came out quite recently. The narration? Excellent. The casting? Exquisite. The cinematography? Gives Terrence Malick a run for his money. <gasps> but the real meat of this one is the story, and dear god does it not disappoint. I won't be spoiling the ending for you, so you're going to have to check it out for yourself. Peak underrated YouTube content. They dug the world's deepest hole. Somebody dies. Sits at a mere 279 views at the time of recording. So go ahead and give them a watch, a like, and maybe even a subscribe. They deserve it. If there's one subject of discussion that's never boring, it's gotta be nuclear bombs. We're talking Trinity, Sarbamba, the Vela incident. Discussing these bad boys never gets old. This brings us to Desert Rock Nuclear Tests, 1951-1957, U.S. Army soldiers observe atomic bomb blasts, arguably the most kino out of any bomb tests. The shot of the soldiers peeking out over the trench to bear witness to what is the single most destructive force on Earth, and that lingering worry that these soldiers are far too close to the detonation to avoid any of the radiation. Just look at this. The shot is phenomenal. It's like it's from a movie. People on the internet often make fun of those who don't know how to take a proper screenshot or screen recording, but you can't really deny that with some videos, recording the screen with a handheld device just adds to the charm. Enter Mr. Burns Hits Bart With Car, a video that filtered over 20% of the people who saw it. The context for this clip is that Bart is greatly exaggerating the car accident he was in, but without context, it appears as though the villainous Mr. Burns and Smithers are straight up murdering Bart for no reason. It's the lack of any explanation whatsoever, that thumbnail, and the off-putting animation of the early Simpsons that earns this clip a place on the list. There is no shortage of gaming funny moments uploaded to YouTube, and I've seen quite a few in my time. Yet, none of them have managed to surpass the 2018 classic, English Meet French on Sea of Thieves, Ship Emoji Anchor Emoji. On the whole, multiplayer interactions between people of different nations are generally lighthearted and playful. But these guys hit it off. That are you Spanish, Spanish line never fails to make me smile. The Frenchman's accent is just so funny to me. I always have to come back to this. That 360 degree turn from him saying, kill you all Spanish, Spanish, to I, I love Spanish. Spanish. I don't use the term wholesome that often, but there's really no better way to describe this interaction. And who could forget that final line from the Frenchie? I don't understand because my English is very bad, <laughs> but okay. I've only seen a little bit of Seinfeld, but every time I watch an episode or a clip on YouTube, I get this funny feeling inside me. The show is at times extremely funny, and I'm never sure whether Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld wrote something intended as a joke. And the characters, they're all masterclasses. Volumes could be written on the archetype that is George Costanza, a failure in most aspects of his life, whose non-stop stream of relationships are a gift from the writers alone. There were a lot of video options with George, as well as the other three main characters. But if I had to go with just one, it would have to be George quits his job, then pretends like nothing happened. The Revenge. Seinfeld. The video is exactly what you would expect given the title, but the real meat of this clip comes from the start and the end. It's the contrast of the famous Jason Alexander rant, i.e. Duckman style, where he finally takes up some real will of his own. After failing to come up with an alternate career path, George relinquishes his newfound freedom and returns to his old post. And the counter rant his boss breaks out is one of the single most brutal, deconstructive monologues I've ever seen. And the contrast between the end of this monologue and the upbeat boobass of the Seinfeld YouTube outro is the icing on the cake. I was close to selecting Jason Alexander in 1985 McDonald's ad, as it seemed to provide the viewer with a window of what Costanza could have been, but those rants are just too good to pass up. I hear you say, but this is just a clip from a TV show. This isn't really a YouTube YouTube video. And you're right. Guptill89 is an anomaly. I have a lot of admiration for this man, but I cannot for the life of me understand him. Guptill89 presents the top 10 hottest female Sonic characters. The amount of courage it would take to write, record, edit, and upload this titan of YouTube is something we can only dream of. The references to these hedgehogs as being females does a superb job at establishing the tone for this seven minute masterpiece. That sign, hot chick heaven, his obsession with hair, always describing it in acute detail. 
Honestly, I'd love to see a return to this kind of unabashed content, proudly flying in the face of modern day cringe culture. We need more people like Guptel89, who lack any restraint in what they create. Mr. Johnson is part of a hip hop group called Fatty Spins. Recently, he made a song called, get this, Doing Your Mom. Doing your mom? That's just insulting! This next one is pretty simple. As you'll know, Japan suffered one of its worst earthquakes on March 11th, 2011. And this video is a simulation of earthquakes in the region, and it's unsettling in the realest sense. A lot of us would make those kinds of Lego stop-motion animations in our youth. I was working on one for a long time back in the day, and I sometimes can't help but imagine how it would have turned out if I stuck to it. JD Brick Productions doesn't have to wonder, because year after year he turns out these first-rate Lego battle animations. The best video they've made thus far is their Lego World War I, The Battle of Verdun, Stop Motion. They really do manage to successfully envelop the horrors of war, with nothing but these Danish kids toys. And just look at the melee bits! These fights are so much more captivating than what a huge studio spending 300 million manages to achieve. This is YouTube near its best, a passionate creator sharing their work, asking for nothing but an audience. I'm a sucker for any and all types of upscaling, colorization, etc., especially when applied to historical footage. And that one video of the snowball fight in 1897 is a great window into the past, and seeing how people back then were, in fact, very similar to people like us. But my favorite of that channel, 19th Century Videos Back to Life, is the remastered footage of Pope Leo XIII. This man was born in the year 1810, making him the oldest person ever recorded. This guy bore witness to the death of Napoleon when he was 11, and the Wright brothers' first flight would happen mere months after his death. There's something about seeing this guy, in a YouTube video uploaded in 2021, looking this animated. It all makes you feel interconnected with the past. The excellent music choice in the video raises that emotion even further. Schizo posting is always interesting to observe, even more so if the poster seems to genuinely believe the things they're saying. But you can't deny that something definitely seems up and Shaq has MK Ultra glitch live on NBA TNT. Spooky. Seeing Shaq just sit there with that creepy expression and snapping out of it as soon as somebody says his name, it doesn't fit right with me. The atmosphere also adds a lot to it, an authentic instance of two friends speculating as to what exactly is going on. This is the kind of spooky stuff that YouTube and the internet at large really excels at. Some of the comments on this video are simply poetic. Lindy Beige is a YouTuber who mainly makes long-form historical content, in a format as though he's giving an enthusiastic lecture, often bouncing from topic to topic as he works towards his point. Lindy has this sincere, captivating feeling to him that can make these kinds of long runtimes fly by before you notice it. He also approaches his YouTube content in a similar vein to how people did in the olden days. In one upload, you'll have a 110 minute lecture about the history and culture of Vikings, and in the next, you'll have him figuring out how to make a bowstring from scratch. But my favorite of all these off-cuff videos has to be, A Chap in a Uke plays Awfully Different Without You. It does a great job of bringing back that comfy feeling of old, spontaneous YouTube. Bosnian Ape Society is an interesting channel. It may or may not be a testament to my being a midwit, but I usually have a hard time making sense of what these videos are exactly supposed to be about. Perhaps his single most indecipherable video is, You have reached the end, with nothing happening aside from a slowly crescendoing sound, which seems to be some kind of a mechanical engine roaring. From that description, it may sound unexceptional, but in actuality, when watching the video, you can expect a strangely peaceful sensation to emerge. It gives off that out-of-bounds feeling you experience when you're beyond the intended playing area of a video game. Or something like that. If you're a zoomer like me, you probably see the 2000s as your sort of formative years. Not formative in the teenage sense, but formative as in your brain was literally forming. So all your memories you have from back then have this weird, blurry quality. And what could embody this more than Jib Jab, this old website slash YouTube channel where you'd stick a picture of your face into these little animations that dance around, and this was considered a novelty at the time. But their best work was their satire on American politics. It's the pinnacle of that nostalgic 2000s feeling. And out of all of them, the best has to be this land. While it certainly was a chaotic time period with a myriad of deeply dividing controversies, you look at the present day and then you look back at George W. Bush and John Kerry dancing in this weird old art style and you can't help but think, maybe it was better back then. 
Speaking of George W. Bush, there's been this trend where people get AI cloned voices of the US presidents and put them in all sorts of wacky situations. The best one by far is the Biden and the Gang series, which has real characterization for each of the presidents, and consistently great comedic timing. Dick Cheney is the villain, Truman always wants to hang out but they never let him, it's like it's a cartoon. Biden and the Gang, the Great Ice Cream War, is easily my favorite out of all of them, because it has everything you could want. Biden and the gang have to face off against Bill Clinton to see who can sell more ice cream, and Jimmy Carter is in it too. It's the single most impressive use of AI that I've seen to date. One of YouTube's strong suits is to put recommendations on your feed that you wouldn't search for in a million years, but still manage to keep you captivated once you start watching. The best example of this can be seen in Seizure Warning, pushing sorts to their limits, a video that's mesmerizing beyond belief. You can't look away. I'd be willing to bet that 99% of those 4.7 million views knew next to nothing about sorting algorithms. And I'm one of them. This is the kind of baby sensory video you'd show your kid if you wanted to turn them into a sociopath. And I haven't even mentioned the sound design. The sound design is so satisfying, it almost makes me understand ASMR. And now thanks to YouTube's most replayed feature, you can just skip all the good parts. Just listen to that. Whenever I think of the greatest YouTubers on the platform, one name that always comes to mind is Ahoy. From his iconic, iconic ARM series, to his in-depth documentaries on retro gaming, Ahoy never misses. You can't forget about those outros too, with the badass quotes and the editing all in sync with the music. He makes his own music too. And while Ahoy has a ton of great videos worth checking out, his best has to be Nuclear Fruit, How the Cold War Shaped Video Games, an expertly done analysis of the Cold War and its influence on pop culture. If Ahoy ever had a magnum opus, this would be it. I have never watched a single episode of Top Gear, but there's definitely something about that show. I'm not sure if it's the memes, or that everyone in the show is getting really old, or if it's the fact that they're British, or simply the enigmatic character that is Jeremy Clarkson. Regardless, there is something about that show that doesn't sit right with me. But evidently the kid who made this next video was a big fan, to the extent that he made his own Spongebob parody of the intro. The one I'll be choosing is none other than Spongebob Top Gear Into 2. I'm not selecting it because the kid spelled intro as in 2, but rather because of a specific edit he brought into this world. The sight of Squidward being ground into a pulp by a once esque machine, complete with Clarkson's famous narration in the background. It is quite funny. If a video ever deserved a thousand times as many views as it has, it would be this one. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Poland Ball slash Country Ball art style, I'm going to give an extremely brief summary of what it is. It's basically about these little ball guys who represent different nations or kingdoms, and they are typically used to joke about history, politics, and stereotypes. They're usually webcomics, but sometimes they go beyond this format, and they're used in YouTube videos such as with Brain for Breakfast or Kraut. But my favorite application of this art style goes to none other than Akaria Ball, with his second most recent upload, Meet the East. Akaria Ball's work is hilarious, but with many of his videos there's a sort of solemn, depressing atmosphere in the background. Meet the East is... To me, peak country balls. All the gags land, the animation makes the balls look cute, irrespective of the national suffering they represent. Meet the Balkans was a close contender. Comparing Joy's World Tour to The Report of the Week, it's the sight of a good man facing off against the embodiment of sloth and gluttony, the god emperor of humanity facing off against Nurgle. It's as if Crindle Moose highlighted all of the good and evil to be found in America and put it into these two contrasting men. Notice the difference in volume between their eating, how Joey allows the food to rest all over his face, while Review Bra carefully wipes his lips at the subtlest particle of cheese. Review Bra's quiet chewing versus Joey's hedonistic moans. This kind of social commentary is some of the best there is. There's no narration explaining it to you, because you're innately able to recognize good and evil. A newer YouTuber with a very distinctive style that I love, the Ratman Bob is really something. He always has this weird music playing in the background, that's mixed so that it's really loud, and the choices of music are very strange too. Some of his videos kind of make you feel like you're going insane watching them. And he has this awesome visual style. I don't really know how to describe this, maybe it's like middle school teacher powerpoints, but I really like it. His video Poisonous Meat, Animals That Get Revenge From Beyond the Grave, is the most overwhelming, and by extension, my favorite, but all of his videos have something to offer you. When it comes to covering video games, Kroby Cat is among the very best. Even though people may not always agree with what he has to say, you can't deny that his method of telling narratives is great. 
He shows you the footage, and allows the viewer to interpret it for themselves. This kind of content is enough to put any gaming journalist to shame. And while his rise and fall type videos are great, the best he's published thus far has to be the I would really prefer if you'd be quiet, SGDQ 2014. Cringe comedy exists, but there's something beyond it. Something past cringing. During a speedrun of the 1999 Tomba 2 The Evil Swine Return, Caveman DCJ meets a curious man wearing a green sweatshirt. Little did he know, history was about to go down. The guy in the green shirt is the quintessential annoying younger brother. The mustachioid Caveman DCJ is the quintessential older brother who can only put up with it for so long. Throughout this 7 minute gauntlet, the green shirt guy desperately tries to stir up the slightest bit of conversation whilst everyone else is glued to the stream. It escalates further and further until the secondhand embarrassment reaches critical levels, resulting in Caveman DCJ going nuclear. As you would imagine from the title of the video, he leans over and says to him, I would really prefer if you would be quiet. It was probably necessary, but it's still gotta be one of the most brutal things I've ever witnessed. One day, divinity struck Brian Borkert. He started to slow down the vocals of these Alvin and the Chipmunk albums, and the outcome was something incredible. With their voices tuned down to a human tone, a great number of catchy pop songs became evil. And out of all of these songs, one stands out in particular. Chipmunks on 16 speed, Heaven is a Place on Earth. With these eerie vocals, the song takes on an entirely different meaning. What would it literally mean for heaven to be a place on earth? If you haven't already listened to this, then you need to go and check it out right now. Memory Hole is a channel which, over the years, has put out a treasury of highbrow YouTube kino. We're talking about fish heads, roadkill, spelled with six L's, male cat, rap rad dad, nobody's there underscore nobody cares, all timeless classics. But towering above all of these is the aptly titled Ego Vroom. Six minutes of a man standing in a nondescript room, with the occasional cut to other innocuous footage. You see, the way Memory Hole makes these videos is by remixing Old America's funniest home videos clips, and putting his own spin on them through the editing process. In Hugo Vroom, Memory Hole opts not to make things nightmarish and disturbing as he so often does, but instead slaps some uplifting ambient music over the vrooming man. He appears so content, like he's figured out everything he ever needed to know. I don't see how anyone could dislike this video. The way this one contrasts against the rest of his channel, it's like it's light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, there's a bit of a gap in recording the script here. My throat has been irritated for a few months, but it should be fine now. If you notice anything different, and that's what it is. Let's talk about Team Fortress 2. The YouTube market for TF2 is always bustling, so it's no surprise that a huge amount of great content has already been created. For the sake of this list, I'm only going to allow myself to pick two TF2 videos. Being Soy, Heavy is Dead, Lazy Purple's How It Feels to Play series, anything by El Toro 64 Us, Team Fabulous 2, Winglet, Kostamoinen, and all the other great SFM animators. And of course, who could forget Emesis Blue? But none of these are the 20th best YouTube video ever. That honor goes to Why I Love the Scottish Resistance, TF2. One of the most underrated videos on the platform. Once you're 5 minutes in, it'll feel as though you've been watching this thing for hours. It's not exactly easy to explain anything in this video. There used to be this YouTube channel called Every Frame a Painting, and that's what I'm thinking when I'm watching this video. To really watch it, you have to use those arrow keys on your keyboard to understand any of it, the ones that go frame by frame. This is the kind of video that you have to watch once, all the way through, and then with subtitles, and then on .25 speed, and then backwards to have even the slightest idea of what anything was about. It's the kind of thing where the creator must have put in a transition to every JPEG and PNG he'd ever saved. That's his whole editing style. Picking the second TF2 video wasn't any easier. Pelengo has a great series starting off with The Cart is Supposed to Move Forward that I really enjoy. Another close contender was Talking About PL Underscore Badwater for 12 Hours, an immensely impressive undertaking by Casual TF2, and his other stuff is cool too. But at the end of the day, I gotta give it to Fish Tank. No, not that Fish Tank. I'm talking about Fish Tank. He's probably the single best YouTuber who makes TF2 videos working right now, with fast-paced comedy and engaging editing. And out of his catalog, one video stands out above all the others, the godlike bison killstreak. So his killstreak videos make you feel like you're going on an adventure with him, as he's struggling to do something really challenging. And the transitions, they're so intricate and creative for something that's only going to be visible for a few seconds. You have to give it to him. And as for the climax, it's perfectly satisfying. The year 2008 pumped out some really good media. 
The Dark Knight, GTA 4, Fallout 3, and a plethora of iconic albums. Meanwhile, the internet was starting to generate a greater degree of culture through skits, YouTube poops, and early memes. One such meme taking the place for number 18. An ever-enduring video, Morshu breaks out in song manages to keep its appeal 15 years on. It really was a simpler time back then. People are always saying, oh, you've just got rose-colored lenses on. Things were just as bad then as they are now. But they're wrong. Giga Kino like this proves otherwise. Listen to how they splice sentences to make Morshu say Tetris. Tetris. What more can you ask for? Morshu Breaks Out in Song is the culmination of 2008. The only video that could threaten its place in this slot is Morshu Breaks Out in Song again. But the songs in the original are just too good to pass up. For this next one, you'll need a little historical context. On the 12th of December, 2011, someone on 4chan's television and film board noticed something funny about leaked audio from The Dark Knight Rises. Watch this clip. You're a big guy. For you. Did you pick up on the subtle homoerotic undertones? Watch it again. You're a big guy. For you. Get it? You're a big guy. For, for you. you. Now fast forward about five years and a month. Shia LaBeouf is filming a live stream which is connected to the internet 24-7. The stream becomes a sort of a local pilgrimage, with antics from trolls slowly escalating. You've probably seen the internet historian video, so you know what this is about. Meanwhile, all the way through those five years, Bane posting was only growing stronger on TV, at times consuming the whole of the catalog. Enter Jesus, a man of extraordinary vocal talent and memorization skills. He recreated the entire opening scene of The Dark Knight Rises, down to the subtlest inflections. The way he covers the music in the background, the sound effects, how effortlessly he switches between characters. It's nothing short of a bona fide achievement. And according to a comment, he's a pro wrestler now. Good for him. But we're never going to forget his role in Man Standing in Front of LaBeouf's Monument reenacts Bane Scene. One of the things I love about YouTube is the sheer range of enjoyable content the platform has to offer. From all of the low effort shit posts to the hour long documentaries, you've got access to all of it for the price of a few ads here and there. And when you're talking about documentaries on YouTube, it would be a crying shame not to bring up Imp Lemon. And although his Art of the Choke video isn't his most ambitious, it's my favorite by a large margin. When someone makes a really good, long-form video, commenters often praise these videos as being on the same pedestal as the Netflix documentary. This doesn't give Art of the Choke any credit, as Imp has already reached a level of pacing that beats out the vast majority of what you can find on Netflix. His usage of music really stands out, so much so that I've started using some of his selection in my own videos. It's in Art of the Choke that all of his best skills have a chance to shine. He bases the video around seven increasingly severe sports failures, until it ends in a brilliant optimistic conclusion. When Imp's dealing with this kind of optimism, he always keeps everything played down, never getting too sappy. The ending to the Art of the Choke exemplifies this perfectly. He always knows exactly where to go. There were a lot of Terry Davis clips to choose from. For those of you who aren't in the loop, Terry was this brilliant programmer who unfortunately developed schizophrenia. And despite how much of what he said amounted to incoherent ramblings, something really truthful would occasionally shine through. Terry Davis on Simplicity and Terry Davis Wins Chess Against God were close contenders for this ranking, but they weren't able to surpass the profoundness of monkey music, Rip Terry Davis. Not only because he shows off his surprisingly good drumming skills, but because his words on creativity here are very precise and meaningful. This clip works best without any other commentary from me, so I'll leave you to look it up for your own watching. There are some really great movie scores out there. There will be Blood, The Godfather, Star Wars, and the composers never get enough credit. Where would Sergio Leone be without Ennio Morricone, or Spielberg without Williams? But there's one guy who always crops up, who generally doesn't do it for me. Hans Zimmer. But Inception. The theme is just two chords repeating again and again, which makes the fact that it sounds really good all the more impressive. If there was a giant tier list of all the movie scores, Inception would be in, like, B tier, but that's still good. Now, on August 11th, 2012, Jeff7181 posted an amusing segment from a 1997 Air Force training video. This leads us to the 14th best video on the platform. You may be familiar with the meme trend that started earlier last year, that is the whole hope posting thing. Memes edited with an optimistic, encouraging message. Basically, anti-doomer stuff. And there's one that stands out above all the rest. It's a voice AI clone of the aforementioned missile clip, reading a motivational speech, with Hans Zimmer's Inception playing in the background. There are some motivational YouTube videos I fall back on sometimes. 
Roll the Dice by Charles Bukowski, read by Tom O'Bedlam, is really good, but the best one has to be The Missile Must Motivate You. Think Miss is the kind of YouTuber where, after you learn about them, you'll start noticing their stuff in the wild from time to time. My first encounter with Dankmus was at the end of Implement's video on Twitter, the quest for the blue checkmark. He builds up to the ending, then drops the absolute banger that is Pretzel Wagon. As it turns out, this guy has four channels, but the best one is definitely Dankmus. He's produced tracks such as Damn Vegetables, Not Lenny, and Poochie the Dog. You're doing yourself a massive disservice if you aren't listening to these. It doesn't even matter if you like The Simpsons. Some of these things have been in my head for years. It's also the namesake of this channel, Strub. Unquestionably the best one, Snrub Embiggened is a modern masterpiece, worth analyzing piece by piece. Just listen to that subtle distortion as he says, someplace far away. Someplace far away. This track is the kind of premiere, highbrow content you just can't find anywhere else. Danker Beef is a YouTuber who started out making these generic memes that followed the conventions of internet humor at the time. But over the course of his career, his work gradually became more and more surreal, with streaks of horror popping up. Some of these became extremely popular. ST has reached almost 10 million views. And as time went by, Beef's content only grew stranger, past the point of comedy, and into what can best be described as absurdist art. This culminates with his final video, And And. There's no obvious explanation for what any of this is supposed to mean, and there is an unmistakably eerie vibe to the whole thing. I don't mean to sound like the stereotypical zoomer who goes crazy looking at empty Chuck E. Cheese's, but there is something off about the whole channel. It's made worse by the fact that his Twitter has been abandoned, save for these cryptic tweets. But And And isn't the video I selected for 12th place. It's this even stranger unlisted video that has the same title as its URL. It's probably meaningless nonsense, as he seems to say in the video itself, but to me it's creepy in a unique way. It makes me feel like I'm being watched. So this part of the script was written a while ago, and he's actually returned, but one of his new videos has a black sun in it, so it's probably just a matter of time until YouTube axes him. There was a little speculation that he'd been hacked, as he has been pumping out a ton of really, for lack of a better word, low effort videos, but you can tell with the occasional animation that it's still him. He's just gone nuts. And ring ding dong, the whole ticking going on, it makes me feel like someone's watching me. Chris Chan, A Comprehensive History, is a series that really raised the bar for what can be done in this medium. For those of you who don't know, Chris Chan is... Trying to succinctly describe him as like putting World War II into a single sentence. You can do it, but if you're going to want any real idea of why this thing is so important, you're going to have to go pretty far in depth. This documentary is no doubt the best place to start, and I wasn't certain if I should pick this first episode or a later one with some of the more iconic parts of this story, but that haunting feeling that comes with anything related to his childhood was too much to pass up. It's likely that if this video was made in the future, then the episode that covers the events of the June 2021 incident, or the final episode, would take this one's place. But for now, 10th place goes to Chris Chan, A Comprehensive History, Part 1. Respect to Gino Samuel for sticking with this subject for so long, and always keeping an objective perspective. Clay World is a series that a lot of you will remember fondly, and it's easy to see why. The ideas for all the gags are so original, and the comedic timing is superlative. But which Clay World video is the best? Could it be Grenade Gregory? The satisfying conclusion we got with All Gone. Perhaps the trailblazing artistry of Friendball, or even Yellow Seed, the very first Clay World episode, created way back in 2003. If you have any familiarity with this series, then you can probably guess which one I'm going to pick. That's right, it's Pancake Minds, indisputably the best one. Robert Benford kills it with the line deliveries. I don't know, they look like pancakes. Every character introduced is memorable. What the hell is going on here? What is all of this? And the violence and gore is just exemplary. Ah! This is an essential piece of art right here. YouTube skit comedy is on an extinction path. It's not dead yet, but the glory days are long behind. Imagine, would someone ever have the balls to pull off the kind of stunts you saw from AVGN or Linkara? Doug Walker and his nostalgia critics still do these, but there's clearly something unique about that case. But in the current year, it's like the Wild West has been tamed. So we're dealing with Uncle Dane's second channel here. No, not that second channel, it's the one home to all of the skits he made with his friend, Austin Stevenson. I wanted to give this slot to one of their weird indie films, like Love Spoons or Hammer Boys, and those are definitely worth watching, but the skits are definitely the best part about this channel. And what could be better than In Real Life, 
a collection of not one, not five, but eleven brilliant skits. Math Hacks, Blue, Peanuts Brothers. It's a certified classic. Outsider art is always fascinating stuff. Stuff like Henry Darger's work, which was only discovered after his death. The advent of the internet has given rise to a massive amount of outsider art, and while most of it isn't very notable, one series on YouTube has a special place in my heart. The Adventure Man series, which is currently in its fifth season, has to be one of the most distinctive things on the platform. It's a show stylized after the character design from American Dad and other McFarland IPs, although much of what you see on screen seems to be Nick Keith's original creation. The very best episode of the show has to be Season 3, Episode 12, Journey to the Center of the Dome, which represents the best of what the series has to offer. It has these bizarre montages that make you wonder whether or not they were made as a joke, and these cutaway segments that feel like they're some kind of avant-garde cinema. This driving sequence with the two main characters gazing off into the distance is, for lack of a better word, Lynchian. And so many episodes of this series manage to cover current events in a nuanced fashion. Biden Comes to Dinner was another standout. It's crazy to think that if Seth got on that plane, then we will be missing out on all of this. Ice Snort is a YouTuber who mostly makes comedic edits out of a particular scene from the 1974 stop animated film The Year Without a Santa Claus. He's been doing these YTP type videos for years now, but in December of 2021, he released his Chef Devoir. To really comprehend this video, you have to see all of his other Snow Miser edits. It's approximately 45 minutes worth of content, but it's entirely worth it for understanding his masterpiece. Conveniently, he made a playlist of all of these videos, so I'd recommend starting there. And the video in question? The 31st YouTube video in the Smizer playlist. It's none other than Roller Miser, the single most adrenaline inducing YTPMV ever made. No, the single best YTPMV ever made. Listen to this bit at the 1 minute 23 second timestamp. Those vocals of the Snow Miser's backup dancers are chilling. The whole video is an adaptation of Carpenter Brutt's Roller Mobster, which is easily one of the best songs from the Hotline Miami 2 soundtrack. Two minutes in, you're treated to this nightmare sequence of this dinosaur screaming whilst being burnt alive, and this rotating sphere depicting the green M&M punching Jeb Bush is gradually approaching you, the viewer. This video is required viewing. The Top 5 The previous 45 videos were up there, but now we're dealing with some of the most valuable media that the whole of the internet has to offer. Hampow93, My Brother, which I care for, is one of the best things to ever come out of YouTube. It's a documentary that gives you something truly real. For the start, I was wondering why everything had this foreboding atmosphere to it, with the score droning on and this kind of apocalyptic soundscape. It's about these two brothers who have their own little YouTube channel, where they upload footage of emergency vehicles, and they still do it to this day. They're both entirely unfiltered people, with a very childish way of speaking. But by the end of the video, you'll understand why everything has this tone to it. The realization of why these two brothers are the way they are has to be one of the most haunting things I've seen in any film. How did the creator find these people? Did he select them at random? And did it just so happen that they would make for such a good film? The guy who made this documentary, Trapped with Three Peas, made another one about Gothic King Cobra, and while it is great, it's not nearly as good as this one. To my knowledge, he hasn't made any other documentaries for years, but I hope that this style of filmmaking won't be forgotten. It's honest, in the realest sense. It gives you a taste of reality that you don't easily come across. Number 4 is Coffee Time for Intalk English. Hurry up. Good morning, people. I sniff my rose very good. Shut up. Shut up, you wait. Shut up, water. <laughs> oh, my spoon. Because coffee inside is uh, uh, flesh. No flesh. <laughs> Number three is a little different. If you've been browsing YouTube for a while, there's a decent chance that at some point you've come across Pilot Red Sun. His work is referenced a lot, and sometimes you'll hear his god tier music playing in the background of other people's videos. He is the master of any and all YouTube animation. All of his videos are infinitely rewatchable. There's something hypnotic, something addictive about them. Not in the lol so random sense that you get from a lot of other channels in the same field, but a feeling that's legitimately otherworldly. And the music, of course, stands on its own. But out of Pilot Red Sun's whole library, one video has to be the best. Grinch's ultimatum is the crowning achievement of online animation. That moment when the Grinch starts dancing is cinema. It's no wonder that this particular video is parodied so much. 
Once you see it for the first time, you'll never be able to go through life the same way. About once a year I go through all of Pilot Red's son's videos, and they always hold up, especially the unlisted ones. And I watch Grinch's ultimatum last, to save the best for last, as this video is just about as close to perfection as you can get. But you can get closer. Grinch's ultimatum was a work of art, but there are videos that manage to overshadow it in the stories that they tell. There is no shortage to the number of rise and fall videos on YouTube, videos that document internet culture in the form of disgraced e-celebs and lolcows. Most of these videos have a moralizing tone to them, going over a surface level biography of some controversial figure. Remember Pro Jared? I don't. Who cares about any of this? It's meaningless. But there is one guy who is an exception. Frederick Knudsen, in all of his videos, is objective and unbiased. He just tells you what happened after doing some real in-depth research, such as browsing internet forums other than Reddit. His best video by a mile concerns someone who was brought up earlier on this list. Terry Davis, the schizophrenic programmer who thought he could talk to God. At 86 minutes, this video more than justifies its length, and the music by Ryan Probert couldn't be any more appropriate for the descent of Terry Davis. The video, being a well-written, well-paced, and well-researched documentary, isn't the most technically impressive video in the niche. What makes it a masterpiece is the subject matter. Chris Chan, a comprehensive history, while having a similarly substantial amount of effort, is the kind of series that fills you with despair. And while Terry's story is undeniably tragic, for me, it was through this video that it felt meaningful. When the final video of Terry plays, free from any commentary, it brings everything together. If you made this story into a biopic, you could definitely make something impactful, but I think that Terry's story is best told through this medium of internet documentation. And now I'm not saying that this is the specific reason why I like this video, but there is a lot of self-censorship going on on YouTube these days. You see people distorting certain words that are risky for demonization. For instance, someone would turn sexual assault into sexual assault. That kind of rubs me the wrong way. I mean, I know where they're coming from. Everyone wants money, but I just can't help but respect Fred because uh, let's just say he doesn't do that in this video. And he did recently put out that EVE Online thing that took him like two years, but it doesn't remotely compare to this one. I wonder what he was up to over the course of those two years. Temple OS Down the Rabbit Hole is an all-time great, a 9 out of 10. But it's not a 10 out of 10, there's only one 10 out of 10. Only one number one, a single, perfect video. We've seen shit posts, effort posts, shit posts with a profound amount of effort. But to cap it all off, we're gonna end on a genuine achievement. And now, for some honorable mentions. Doing Your Mom, Official Instrumental. The Ass Watcher. Cutscenes from a Lost Valve Game. McDonald's Treasureland Adventure, Sega Treasure, Undiscovered Easter Egg, Brendan Fraser's Last Will and Testament, The Heartbroken, Part 1, M. Bison's reaction to Obama's victory, Mr. Delicious TV Ad 3, the one where he talks about his vasectomy, What Do Barneyists Really Believe? Tribute. YTP Deliver Us. One Plus Two, Book of Shadows, is the greatest YouTube video of all time. It's a YouTube poop by this guy called Awful Fawful. Throughout its 17 minute runtime, it tells a kind of a story, and the whole thing is loose and open to interpretation. But with the feeling that the video gives off, I don't know if everyone will have this experience, but to me, it's as good as it gets. The opening montage with the song Fault Lines by the Mountain Goats has some of the most memorable imagery I've seen on the internet and the way the title switches from Pizza Delivery to Deliver Us. As you might have noticed, it's all in black and white, which was a major taken to avoid potential copyright claims. In my opinion, this actually adds to the quality of the video. It's like how in the shootout at the end of Taxi Driver, the censors gave it an X rating, so Scorsese had to desaturate the blood, and it passed off with an R rating, but it actually looked better and more stylized with the desaturated blood. It's a good example of how you can work around limitations and make a project better even though it's probably just a matter of time until Viacom takes down the video for good. Deliver Us also has some horror elements, but not the kind like, ooh, the scary face, if you saw this face, that means he's gonna get you, but the actually good kind. Nothing is ever explicitly explained to you, but you kind of get the impression that Nosferatu is the antagonist in this world, because bad things happen whenever he shows up. It's funny, too. The edits and voice mixing are top tier. And with all these things going for it, Deliver Us would be a legendary video, so maybe not the best. It's not 100% perfect. There is one part that I find unsavory, but it's the last two minutes that do it. 
that final montage to a cover of The Times They Are at Change conveys the kind of thing that I couldn't put into words. But then I saw the video and I thought, that's it. While Awful Fawful might not have meant to convey what I took away from this segment, it was still deeply moving. It's that everything was supposed to come to a head around late 2019, and we've all been going off borrowed time since then. Everything keeps changing, and the cutoff point was a few years ago. It's like we're on the wrong timeline. It's like that Milton William Cooper quote. And we all wish we could go back. There's Squidward and there's his childhood, and after committing some crimes he tries to run after it, but it's too fast. This kind of symbolism is littered throughout the video. You can watch it a thousand times and still pick up something new. And like I said at the start of this video, this is my opinion. If you watch Deliver Us and think, well, what's the big deal, I don't get it. It's up here because I specifically like this video the most. If you want a more objective ranking, you can check out the guys down at WatchMojo, who've made similar videos to this one in the past. Their top 10 YouTube videos that broke the internet put Gangnam Style at the number one spot. Probably better than Deliver Us, to tell the truth. He made it through the whole video, the longest snrub joint to date. I might do other stuff involving increments of 50 in the future, although not necessarily in the format I used here. Thanks for watching.